So we're here at MWC with Imran and Bethany from Humane AI. Uh, and we would like to ask you to introduce to us the AI pin. So AI pin is a new kind of computer. It's essentially um, something that uh, allows you to be more present and gives you a sense of freedom, mainly because it's actually got an AI operating system that we've built from the ground up on top of an Android core that allows it to really uh, do a lot of work for you and really engage AIs to um, make it so that you don't have to be manually doing a lot of operations, which really gives you a new way to interact that allows you to really maintain a little bit more presence and more freedom than you have today. Translate to French. And then to French. Well, how it works is that when I put two fingers down and speak to it in English, it'll speak back in French. So maybe I'll start and yeah. then you can respond. Okay. So it'll... We have a little more. Yes, perfect. So I could say, it's so nice to meet you. And now it'll speak back in French. C'est tellement agréable de vous rencontrer. Now when I put two fingers down, you'll speak to it. And so I'll come closer so you can speak to it. Oui, c'est aussi très euh, intéressant de vous rencontrer et de voir ce pin. Yes, it's also very interesting to meet you and see this pin. Awesome, and it speaks and understands over 50 languages. And it also knows when you're in a new city, it'll default set to the language for the city you're in. So when I landed in Barcelona, it defaults to Catalan or Spanish, which is really powerful. So we have a first of its kind laser projection system that we call Laser Inc. And it essentially allows you to have a display there when you need it, and it disappears when you don't. We use our time of flight camera to understand when your palm is present, and we project only on your palm. When you put your hand down, the display goes away. And this is meant to be for really quick interactions and you navigate the display using touch. Uh, and I can show you. So this is my daughter <laughs> sending me a message. Uh, Al Oliver asks if he can call you after school. Let's move back. Now you can go here, go through time, temperature, and the dates. You can push back to get to the menu. I can go here to see uh, photos that I've taken in the past and scroll through previews and videos here. This is to make sure that after I take a photo, I make sure I got the shot. So every time you ask the device a question, when I hold up my hand, I can interrupt the answer and read the answer on my palm. This is really the heart of a multimodal system, which is really important. We see this as a new kind of computer something that's you know, more established in terms of the uh, coexistence of a lot of these services and things like the you know, emails and slacks, and which will be coming in the future for us. We think smartphones are gonna be around for quite a while, just like desktops and even, even servers are still around in terms of compute platforms. But we do see this as being something as uh, a, a quick go-to for being able to do a lot of that for you. And I think one of the things that's really powerful about it is that the moment you want to actually send a text or think about uh, something that you want more information on, it's right there, ready for you, in a way that other computers aren't. So there's, you know, a couple ways you can play music, but I prefer to just, you know, speak to it very naturally. I'm going to play, uh, you know, play some Taylor Swift, right? Famous artist. Um, what it's going to do is because Loading of our streaming music. partner with Tidal, it's going to load music from Taylor Swift, get her top songs, make a playlist, and look at that, it's starting to play. Right? And you can see I can like control uh, the music and playback with simple gestures. Right? I just paused it by double tapping on it. I can lower volume just by swiping down. I can skip to the next song. Right? These are all gestures, but I can also you know control music just by using the laser display. Right? Look at that. I can go next. I can pause it. I see more about, uh, you know, the album. I can push back, you know, get, see what's next. All sorts of, you know, music stuff that you might expect from a music, you know, experience, but in a new form factor and a new UI. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, the uh, ChatGPT and OpenAI models that you're using? Are you taking into consideration the fact that most AIs right now sometimes hallucinate answers and come up with stuff that isn't, you know, 100% accurate? We don't actually use ChatGPT. We use the OpenAI API as one of our LLMs. Our OS supports multiple LLMs as well. The way our architecture works, though, is that we go out and we find the right thing you're looking for, and so if it's a uh, 
an application experience that we're supporting, we get you that one immediately. If it's information that you want, we try and get you the best and most accurate answer as much as we can. That's you know, all contingent upon what's out there. So we will actually go to the right sources. We'll go to Wolfram Alpha, for example, for mathematics or Wikipedia. Hallucination is something that comes when you go directly from the LLM. We don't go directly from the LLM. We go get it from the broader internet. A lot of the processing seems to happen on cloud. What kind of actions happen locally? Uh, what kind of processing happens locally? Is like even my voice request being sent to be processed there or is the request processed locally on the device itself? So we, we do a lot of things on device. We'll be doing a lot more eventually. So things like uh, a lot more of the intricate pieces in terms of in, uh, speech work, your intent processing, all that happens on device. We do a lot of our gesture recognition directly on device for speed as well. And then when you actually want something more robust, um, it kind of goes out to, to our cloud to do a lot of that interpretation. We'll be bringing a lot of those models that we're doing on the cloud potentially onto devices as they become more and more refined. So you'll see a lot of that happening constantly. I think one of the interesting things about our OS is that we can constantly be upgrading it. So we don't go through yearly cycles um, as typical OSs will be. We can actually push upgrades directly and you'll see a lot of offline usage um, really grow over time. Describe the scene in front of me. And what it's going to do is it's going to scan the image, it's going to take an image, upload it to our clouds where we have some LLMs, and it's going to uh, come up with a summary, and it's going to send it back to the device, and then the device will be able to, you know, speak what it sees. And this is a very basic example, but in the future we'd like to, you know, have you walk the up to like... The scene in front of you shows an individual in a blue shirt holding a professional camera with a mounted external microphone. There is also a person wearing a red blazer holding a microphone suggesting an interview or reporting scenario. Look at that. The background features a busy event or exhibition hall with various people walking around and booths with company branding. There is also a person wearing a blue dress and black boots walking by. The environment suggests an indoor setting with artificial lighting. Look at that. So much information. All sorts of people, you know, people who may be visually impaired or people who have accessibility, you know, issues. And, you know, again, like this is a very brief example, but in the future, you know, maybe you can walk up to a coffee machine and say, how do I make a latte with this? And it'll be able to identify the make and model of the coffee machine and give you instructions. And, we, you know, our vision is to sort of turn the world into your operating system where everything is interactable and you just need a point and get more information. What's the update longevity that you're planning for the pin? Because it's not a cheap device and it's also, for many people, a secondary device. Am I going to put my money down and get one year of support, two years of support? What kind of longevity do you see for this? Yeah, I think we definitely believe that people are going to own their PIN for a while. We're not planning on doing yearly updates on the hardware. This is really about us adding more features like Imran mentioned over time. You wake up and your PIN does something new and that's really what we think is the future and why ROS is so critical. If you want to know more about the Humane AI PIN, be sure to check out our article on AndroidAuthority.com and don't forget to follow for all the latest news from MWC.